Hello and welcome to another episode of Loresworn Chronicles Crusader Kings 2, where we are playing as the Kingdom of Kironia and King Akko the Just, the legendary first king of his people. And we are, uh, we're over here raiding to complete a mission for our Warrior Lodge. And it looks like the rumors were true. It's filled with treasure. Since I was the leader of the assault, I'll take the best share of the loot for myself, but I'll not forget to share part of this bountiful prize with my brothers and sisters of the Band of Medina for informing me of the existence of the treasure. As your men return from looting the holding, one of them hands you an axe with a strange purple sheen and a plus etched into it. Uh, this aberration of a weapon must be destroyed. I'm not, uh, not gonna pick up the D&D &D reference axe here. That's, that's far too silly for a Chronicles playthrough. When we're streaming, we'll go for the silly stuff. Okay. So, we can usurp the High Chiefdom of Yatvingia, which sounds pretty good. So... We have that now, which is cool. Can we create any titles that would actually give us CBs? It doesn't look like it at this point. Okay, so figuring out who our next target should be. I believe we still have a truce with this guy. Yeah, until 8.04. Oh, I think we can change our gender law. I mean, for at least 10 years. Why do I keep... Okay, two more years. I keep miscalculating that for some reason. So in that case, we've already started to snake our way over towards Arcona. So we should start thinking about moving towards Briansk, which is another one of our holy sites. And it looks like the fastest way through there is going to be through Polotsk, who we also have a truce with currently. So, I think it might be time to go to uh, war with the uh, the Drevlianians. This is our, probably one of our largest, if not the largest, re regional rival right now. Their empire spans all the way to the Black Sea. So I'm going to go ahead and get a good screenshot of that. Volhynian Slavic High Chief uh, Vladislav the Frail. Not not really that scared of him, honestly. And uh, I think I think he should be our next target. So where is his actual capital? Oh, it's disconnected from the rest of his lands way up here. So we can. Conquer one province. I think it should probably be Minsk. Yeah, we're going to go after Minsk. Lifetime of war, I tell ya. That is how we do it. And he's calling in his tribal vassals. We're going to go down to speed three since we're at war. Oh, come on, get there. Get there. Yes, reinforcements got there just in time. All right. I forgot to screenshot that, but we did win that battle. I suppose I can always go back and screenshot stuff from YouTube later. And we're going to combine our army. I think we can probably afford to go with speed four, since we're fighting mostly lesser foes, which would be famous last words. We have a grandson born to Naula, and he is a genius, so we have one genius in the third generation so far. All right. Let's go kill their army. Let's see, he wants me to buy some exotic herbs. Sure. 
for 30 gold or for 10 gold. That is quite fine with me. All right, uh, he let me know that the herbs I bought were extremely useful. Sacrifice to Dievas, sacrifice to Dievas, sacrifice to Dievas. Sacrificed four of their elders to Dievas. That is a hat trick and then some. Our ongoing struggle outside of Minsk tribe has brought out the best of our military strategists. One of them is a Letigalian veteran with a penchant for innovation. He's suggesting that he retire from the battlefront and return to Kurtzama to continue his work safe from flying arrows. Uh... Sure. Military technology spread? I'll take it. Sacrifice to Dievas. Everyone gets sacrificed to Dievas in the end. And, eh, I was, I was thinking about marching all the way to their capital. We're just going to siege a bunch of their local holdings. Slash wait for their armies to show up to try to take their stuff back. Alright. Garrison just barely held out. Armed thugs attacked our spy master by, well, uh, investigating the rumor of a plot. That sounds sinister. Are there any plots we know of that are dangerous? Kill this guy, kill this guy. Yeah, no, I don't care about any of those. Fighting alongside with my shield maiden and daughter, Viba, is exhilarating. We move together like two arms of one being, an unstoppable... The roar of pain from behind strikes, startles me, and I spin around to see Viba clutching her side. My lord! Well, apparently I'm such a bad father that I make all of my children call me my lord. I'm sorry, she says. Yeah, well, she's injured. That's... Who? Severely injured. She actually lost a hand. So, my strong daughter, uh, one of my strong daughters has, uh, lost a hand. Are you guys both in the Warrior Society, by the way? He's the leader of the lower tribal authority faction. To make sure everybody's in the Warrior Society. After the battle, they had to uh, amputate my shield maiden's hand. Although a tough blow to any warrior, I didn't expect, to, expect it to get to her. During my visit, she sits idly by her window. Don't trouble yourself, master. Apparently, I also make my children call me master. I did my duty. It's what we do. Uh, let's see. Let my physician see to you. You're truly exceptional. Will you let me visit more often? Uh... Nevertheless, the bards shall compose a song in your name. Um, let's try to make friends with our daughter, who we make call us master. There's nothing, nothing weird about that. Nothing out of the out of you out of the ordinary for Crusader Kings, anyway. Um, let's see, we're gonna have to ambush these guys from the south so they don't get away. I've encountered fledgling Doza many times while carrying out my duties for the Band of Medina, and it's always a pleasant occasion. We talk for hours if the time allows, because she never bores me. Okay, uh, let's see, does she have good stats? She doesn't really have good stats, but uh, I'm just going to profess my feelings, because I feel like that's the kind of guy Anko is. And we have another lover. The last one who died, and we still are getting a bonus from uh, her memento. So maybe we can collect lover's mementos. My commander, Elder Aurelis, has been reported to perform impressively on the plains of Grodno. Most recently, rumor has it that he ruthlessly decapitated an enemy commander before immediately marching on to face his next foe. I think a reward is in order. Out of the money that we don't have. Rumors are great spoils await over here. We will take, we will look into that. 85 legend.
My dear Viba and I are in the garden when we hear an unusual rustling in the bushes. My shield maiden draws her dagger immediately, her keen sense is alert. My heart is pounding. An ambush? In broad daylight, relief washes over me as a small kitten suddenly jumps out in front of us purring playfully. Uh, let's see, I can name her Viba. Uh, we bring the kitten home. And then Akko and Viba become close friends. We can urge the shield maiden to care for the cat. Uh, or we can both laugh, returning to our conversation. I think I'll, I'll give her the kitty. She's only got one hand. She deserves a kitty. It's like the first good father decision that I've made this entire game so far. Viba might be the, uh, the, the person who turns me into a good father. Which, in a way, also makes me a worse father because it's not, like, supposed to be your kid's job to fix you. But let's see, we need a new commander. Uh, my daughter's w husband, who's a genius. Kazar, Kazar bro. We're just gonna siege that right back down and we're gonna end this war. All right, so we have taken Minsk. We are closer to the holy site of Bryansk. And now we're gonna go raid uh, that Polish province that I've heard so much about. Actually, we're probably gonna have to raid a lot of stuff to have our horrible budget deficit go away. Okay, an earthen hill fort has been built in the tribe of Minsk, which apparently was going on before we got there. Uh, let's see. Yep, that's just all people I sacrificed. Alright. Raiding makes me feel good. Have another granddaughter. This is uh, Viba's daughter. So she's gonna grow up in the kitty house. The Lithuanian populace in Mimel have embraced Litigalian culture. That's a very fine distinction, but uh, yeah, we'll take it. I'm probably gonna relocalize the name of the culture to Kironian when we do the EU4 export anyway, but. All right, whole bunch of loot. How close are we? 88 legend. Let's just, uh, let's go continue to raid the poles until we have some more money. And then, uh, we'll figure out who our next target is. Because Akko... Akko only really cares for war. Lock tribe, unsuccessful raid. Alright. And they have a temple here, too. So we might as well stick around and raid that. Who died? I don't even know who she is. Was she in our dungeon? Oh, was she our friend? I don't remember. Okay. Accept the ransom, accept the ransom. My lover Doza is pregnant with my child. Okay. Gonna make sure that I screenshot that. And actually, I'm going to make sure that the lover window is open so we remember why I screenshotted that. Moral authority should be going up. We burned a lot of temples. Sure, Maru. That's all you ever do is invite people to feasts. You ever think maybe you should get a hobby besides feasts? Nala is definitely going to become a commander. Enemy presence in our homelands. What the hell? <laughs> you guys get the hell out of here. 
Get sacrificed to Dievas. So the Ungvar are raiding us. Who are these guys? They're Croatian Slavic pagans. And they think that they can just raid us, so. Alright. Oh, and look, now the Sakala are raiding us too. Let's figure out who our next target is. Do we still have a truce with Polotsk? We do for a couple more years. Do we have a tru uh, truce with Greater Poland still? 804, Brandenburg, truce is up in 799. That one's very close. Well, we could conquer this guy. Has one province on the other side of the Vistula. It is part of the de jure empire we eventually want to control. So we might as well. Uh, let's see. So we'll declare war, then we'll raise levies. Conquest. I didn't check to see if he has any allies, but I'm kind of not worried. Let's go kill these raiders real quick. Fantastic. Sacrifice everybody to Dievas. There's only two types of people. Sacrifices to Dievas and future sacrifices to Dievas. Drinking with Maru. Boyan. I don't know who this kid is. He must learn on his own. I have I have no idea who this kid is. Apparently, he was the son of the chief of Lesser Poland. We're going to play some board games. I'm going to lose at board games. Carousing is over. Thanks for the free prestige. I'll teach you to be just. Mercy, cried the thief, when Yara confronted and accused him of being a robber. Sacrifice to Dievas. Fine day in your hunt out hunting with a small party. As you take a break to eat your midday meal, you find yourself in a discussion on arch archery with Ausra who is uh, one of my concubines. Turns out she's also a devout follower of Perkunas. The longer you talk, the more you seem to have in common. Uh, yeah, let's become close friends. Maybe I'll, I'll be more of a family man after all. Uh, let's see. Oh, Deimos. Yeah, he definitely should be a member of the Band of Medina. I'm going to make I don't think either of my sons are man members of the Band of Medina yet, so I'll have to fix that. Okay, a son was born to Viba. He's a strong son named Likik, I think. Not entirely sure how to pronounce that. Offer peace and force demands. We're going to give this out to... Someone who is qualified, such as this dude, Kuyawi, Kuyavi. There we go. Hostile presence. Where is there a hostile presence in my lands? There we go. Okay, time to invite all my kids to the Warrior Lodge. Recruit, recruit, we have an open position for a marshal, this guy looks great, which means we're going to need a new commander, Mike Damos a commander, two children that lack a focus, as always we are going to raise them in the struggle, I need to screenshot my borders here. Okay, so our truce with Brandenburg should almost be up. December. Oh, we can't wait till December. 
Let's, uh, let's see. Do we want to go after the Volhinians or the Estonians? I feel like we should go after the Estonians before the Swedes get to them. Yeah, let's conquer Sarema. That would be an important strategic island. And I am going to ransom anybody who is worth any ransom. Raise my armies once again. And we're going to get on the march. Okay, so uh, Cursed Against has joined. And Deimos has joined. Also, I have a new grandson. This is the daughter of Naula, and he is a genius. And, uh... You guys are welcome for the opportunity to buy your relatives back from my dungeon. Alright, Deimos uh, has finished his initiation duel, and so has Kerstigarens. Kerstigens. The start of legend. For the band of Medema, I proclaim, raising my glass. The cheers around the table are boisterous and the air hangs heavy with anticipation. There is nothing left here to conquer, someone laughs, raising an eyebrow conspiratorially. Dagonis murmurs, have you ever been to the Abbasid Empire? Ah, 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 Let's see. Oh, okay. It's not telling us... It's not telling us to conquer. Or are we supposed to conquer it? Okay, let's do it. Let's go to the Abbasid Empire. This is definitely going to be in the Legends because the Muslim chroniclers will write about it. Um, okay. Capital idea, Dagonis. Let's seek out fighters in the Abbasid Empire. A group of heroes begin preparing for a journey into the realm of Caliph al-Hadi for blood and glory. All right. So this is, uh, apparently we've, we've received word about it coming up through the river systems because that trade network definitely would have existed. Um, by the way, the Byzantine's not doing so hot. Chief Ringaudus approaches me as I am poring over some maps of the Abbasid Empire. A servant alerts me to his visit, and uh, as I glance up from the table, I notice they are carrying something wrapped in fine fabric. For the battles to come, the man says without further ceremony. I got it! I got the Axe of Perkunas! I make great progress on my legendary journey. Um, or I can pay him <laughs> 11 gold for it. Um... Yeah, I'll pay you for it. Hell yeah. Hell yeah. Alright, so we are going to equip this. The Wolf's Claw is going to go to my heir. So we're going to grant him the Wolf's Claw. That will be the the blade of the air. Oh, I should have given it to I should have given it to freaking uh, Naula instead. She's a better better fighter. But oh well, that's that's awesome though. I like that. I like that a lot. Personal combat skill plus sixteen. Hell yeah. What a splendid object. I wish I would given it to Naula instead. Give it back, you asshole. Alright, he's calling in all his tribal vassals. Hey, I executed the robber bands in Zemigale. That's awesome. The time has come for us to move into enemy territory. Dagonis and I are toasting once more to the Band of Adena. We shall find their most experienced warriors and show them what it means to be led a gallant, Kironian. I declare. Everyone shall know our name! He agrees, slamming his fist into the table. Uh, so let's see. I can say that it's the glory will be all mine. I think we'll, we're stronger together. Yeah.
Well, I'm apparently simultaneously, uh... Oh no, I'm not simultaneously leading this army. Having turned in for the night, I find myself wide awake listening to the snoring of Dagonis. Just as I'm about to get up and do something about my irritation, I hear a rustling in the bushes. Before I can get to my feet, I find a man leaning over me, eyeing suspiciously... Eyeing me suspiciously, a weapon aimed at my throat. You come armed, I see. How about we do this one-on-one? -on -one? Or I can uh, get Dagonis to wake up. So this is a Bedouin warrior with a very high dual skill, actually. Named uh, Ramadan Ibn Bahir. He hails from the Zahedan province. Which is uh, part of the... The Jure Kingdom of Sistan. So I'm just gonna screenshot that that is his home. As soon as the camp is out of earshot, my opponent draws his weapon. Wind moves over the moonlit meadow and the grass bending in waves, causing it to look as if the ground itself is breathing under our feet. This is too easy, I murmur. Then I sever his head from his body. Ha 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 ha! Alright, so he won't live to write about... Um, his experience is meeting me. And, uh, let's see. He was the son of the Wali of Ka Kaje. Who has a sympathy for Christians and, uh, Jews. I want to see if he has anyone at his court who is of a scholarly persuasion. It doesn't look like it. Although his son and heir who is also the brother of uh, Ramadan, is the Sheik of Nishapur. Um, who, he does have a fairly high learning stat. And let's see, anyone at his court? Mayor, mayor, spymaster. I'm looking specifically for the court imam. So this guy... And then if he has a uh, court judge. Yeah, so these these might be guys that are going to have something to say in the uh, historical record about this mythical uh, figure of Akko. Struggle. Slain in a spectacular duel. Walking through the streets of a village in Damascus, the locals were eager to point out how foreign I am. They've clearly... Oh, so hey, we're down towards, like, Baghdad now. They clearly have never seen a man like I... Like... Like I before? No, that should be like me. And while some are adorning my armor in confident stride, it does not take long before I encounter open hostility. Go home, one man barks. You want to say that to my face? To my face? I draw my weapon without hesitation. The crowd scatters around us and my opponent and I fall into circling one another. The ensuing fight is more uh, even than I care to admit. At the end, I am sending a quiet prayer to Dievas as I take in the cheers of our audience and slam my weapon against his head. So this is the mayor of Hila, which is in the county of Baghdad. Um, he has no one in his court to write about him. Your death was the only logical outcome, brother. Fantastic. By the way, let's look at all the people I've killed. Killed 44 people. It's a lot of people. The finest warrior around! Well, that would be Mayor Bashar, Master, a little boy says. Dagonis fishes a coin from his pockets, rewarding the urchin for the information. There he is, the child suddenly cries, pointing at a levantine man down the street. Ah, such fortune! My lord, come face me! Dagonis motions for people to get out of the way, just before Mayor Bashar lunges at me, indignity on his face. I parry immediately, defending myself well, judging by the excited cheers of our spectators. At the end of it all, the crowd has grown still, the streets flowing with the blood of the levantine warrior. Another victorious match. Alright. My kill list is really... Oh, hey, look. Offering peace. We will happily accept that, because... 
Uh, let's see. So we usurped the temple. So we can create a new vassal there. I'm gonna stand down these troops. And, uh, we need to give out some more land. I'm gonna give out Mamel to somebody who is worthy. Let's see. Claim it, claim it, claim it. He has cancer. Um, yeah. I'll make you the chief of Mamel. And let's screenshot our borders. Let's also screenshot, I'm just gonna screenshot the wider picture here really quick so we can kind of see the context in which this legendary journey took place. So that's the first wide screenshot we're gonna use so far. Actually, and I think that's gonna be the end of today's episode, so check out loresworn.com. That's our website. We're at Loresworn Order on Twitter. I am at AsaTJ. That's A-S-A-T-J. Subscribe, hit the notification thing, uh, like, comment, all that stuff, so other people can know about the greatness of this series where I describe things like the strategic importance of owning the uh, Daugava estuary and the outlying uh, islands of Sarema, uh, which would be extremely important for Baltic trade, and I'm sure they will be when we convert this over to EU4. And we will see you guys next time.